Hi, everyone. It's uh, Das Clay and uh, Joto for today, for today's art demo. And uh, we're here again, Teacher Ian De Jesus and me. Uh, we're here again to show you how these things are be are going to give fun during this time of pandemic. Um, you can watch the show if you missed the live uh, show. You can watch it again um, at Facebook, Right Tech. Uh, it will be uh, you can watch it. It's going to be there forever. But it's better if you watch it live so that uh, you can ask questions and uh, you can interact with Teacher Ian or me but uh, better to interact with the artist himself. So take it away, Teacher Ian. Hi, everyone. So let me uh, share with you our uh, Right Tech uh, Stay Home, Stay Safe Live for today. It's again another uh, Thursday afternoon. So uh, if you stay tuned, last week, what we did last week was a... Fun Fox sculpture using dust clay. This is the terracotta variant. So it's now hardened like a good paperweight. You can color it with acrylic. You can leave it as is for the earthy feel. Uh, this week, we will be using uh, the dust clay, but now on the white variant. So this is very similar. Again, this is a an air dry clay so after using it if you leave it uh on a clean and dry environment it would harden similar to a figurine like uh, consistency it has a low odor formula and it is uh, dermatologically tested to be safe on your skin so it's very good to use for your kids and then for your uh, actually for different kinds of projects you can use it for jewelry for small gifts for your friends trinkets there you go and then we, we also have the Joto Pat plume here so here here are some of the clay tools that we will be using later on later on we'll do a small uh, bar relief so it's a small relief sculpture where you can uh, use textures like this and tools like this. And it's, it's like uh, drawing a low relief structure. Uh, the last one that we did, the, the sculpture that we did the other time is a sculpture on the round where you can see all of the sides of the sculpture. This time we'll be doing a nice uh, relief sculpture. And also uh, today we'll, I, I'll be introducing you with uh, Giotto Dita. This is again uh, made from Italy by Fila Group and it's dermatologically tested. Uh, these are specially made for finger painting. So we'll be doing a fun finger painting project for today that you can do with your uh, friends, your kids, your pamankins, your tita and tito. Uh, sometimes we really don't need that much of tools when you're doing this. I'll be using a watercolor paper for today. So I just mounted it with a paper tape around so that it doesn't move. Always remember, uh, if you're using uh, paints, make sure even if the paints are non-toxic, to not put them in your mouth. So you, you should at least uh, look at your uh, kids or those young kids, if you're using this, uh, just refrain from uh, tasting the paint, even if it looks uh, no, colorful. So that's one thing that you will be doing. So these paints are good for uh, many art projects. So you, this, this comes in 750 ml. If you want to check out the prices, the colors that are available, feel free to check the Right Tech Facebook page. You can send a message. If you want to get all of these items that are being used for today's Facebook Live, of course, uh, you can also visit the past Facebook Live. We already have three of them. The first one, we did a fun uh, review and fun projects using some pre-printed uh, coloring canvas boards. And then we also use different kinds of Giotto markers 
and paints for that uh, live. The second one is the Das Clay Terracotta live. And then, of course, today, it, we will be very happy if you will be sharing this live to your friends, to your uh, family, and then to other people who, whom you think that would be interested in this live. So what we need today would be uh, any kind of paint, but I would highly suggest you use the Giotto Dita Finger Colors, best for finger painting. Of course, we'll be using our fingers to paint for today. I'm just using a regular plate for, this is a dessert plate. You can use uh, any mixing plate that you have. This is one thing that is easy to use, easy to clean. So I'll be putting uh, different colors here that I'll be using for the project. So whenever you're using paint, make sure that you uh, shake them well, because sometimes you will see that the paint has this tendency to have the binder separate from the other. So this comes in an easy squeeze. And see, so that's our yellow. And then I'm shaking the other paints. This one is in green. So I'll just put them a little bit apart on my mixing plate. Easy squeeze. Uh, there you go. That's the green one. And then red. Red is one of my favorite colors. There you go. Again, feel free to like and subscribe the Right Tech Facebook page. If you are also on Instagram, you can follow them on Instagram for different kinds of tools, different kinds of, now I'll be getting, uh, this one is the black one. Make sure to shake them well before using. Okay. Again, this is the Giotto Dita finger colors, especially made for finger painting projects. And then I have a brown color here. This is a good, brown like chocolate okay, so there you go one good thing if you are using uh your fingers for painting is that you get the fun feeling of doing everything by hand so we'll be doing this and then we'll let this dry afterwards and then we'll shift with the clay so we'll start with uh our project i'll be using a pencil to start so let's try to make a set of flowers for today so probably i'll be doing some flowers so so these would be uh probably two lips there you go so i'm just doing a rough sketches here and there at the moment we're not using uh white so this would be a very bright colored painting and then we will add so mostly i sketch this way if you want to follow through you can do so i'll be sharing with you some of the techniques that you can do with uh, these kinds of projects so the first thing that we'll be doing is we'll create our floral base. So I'll be starting with a the red. So let me uh, do this so that you can see the paint on the other side. There you go. Okay, so I'll be starting with the red. So one good thing about uh, using your hand while painting, especially if you're painting with kids, is that you get that idea and feel of the surface, the paint itself. As you can see, you can do different kinds of techniques using this. The efficiency of painting, actually painting before it started using hands talaga. As you can see, mga cave paintings from prehistoric times. They use their hands. Sometimes they blow yung paint or pigment into the cave walls. There you go. It's also a good exploration project for kids. There you go. So you have there the reds over here. Right after, I would highly suggest you get a paper towel. And also make sure you have your um, water with you on the side. So that you can uh, dip your 
dip your finger in water, rinse it a little bit. If you're shifting colors, of course, make sure that your hands are clean if you're shifting colors or else it would be all over the place. I'll be getting the yellow. So the yellow would be our brightest, lightest color for today. So as you can see here, we're doing this here and there. Fun thing when you're doing a finger painting is that you get to imprint the thumb mark, your fingerprints in the painting, which makes it more special. There you go. See? So in between, you'll see that the colors will be mixing. So it would be a little bit on the red-orange to the orange hue. Such. The control that you can use with uh, your fingers is very different when you're using a brush. It feels very impressionist, you feel, which makes it nicer. This is very good for abstract art, but today we'll be doing a little bit of a figurative abstract. It means that it is an abstract, uh, it has an abstract feel but rather you get to have some form. There you go. So we have nice bulbs over there. This side. I highly suggest you do this with your kids or the young ones in the family. It's an enjoyable way to enjoy painting. Painting without brushes. Sometimes they, uh, kids, especially kids, they even paint with brushes and then later on they'll use your hands to do some of the details and stuff. So here, this is called uh, the wet on wet blending. When you're doing a wet on wet blending, it's uh, mixing the paint while everything is still wet. You don't mix it right away when you have the, when you have the, what you call this? You don't mix it right away when you, put it on the surface, but rather you mix the colors right after. So I'm getting the brown. I'll be putting a little bit of brown on the lower part of the flower over there, see? And then I'll shift to the green color. Again, the paints we're using today is uh, the Giotto Dita, made in Italy, dermatologically tested, non-toxic, Safe for uh, painting, art materials, art sessions with your kids. There you go. So that those are nice additions of lines on that side. What I really like when you uh, use these kinds of paint with your hands is that you can explore the textures of different art materials. In this case, you will feel the texture of the surface you're painting with, and you can also feel the texture of the paint itself. So is it too smooth? Is it uh, rough? Is it uh, creamy? Is it viscous? Okay, now I'll be using uh, the green to create some of the leaves over here. So I start with a rough painting of the leaf structure, one. When you're finger painting, it doesn't have to be uh, as detailed at first. Of course, we can add detail later on with our finger. I'll show it to you also. But for this part, the first part of the painting, we just want to fill in the details that we want for the said. There you go. Nice, right? So I'll be putting another line here. So you can see I start usually using the my finger doing quick lines like this. Most of my lines are going there. So probably I'll do a line going the other way to balance the composition. Feel free to also do this. You can you can actually paint with us. Or if you want, you can also just watch for now and then try to do it later. 
this session, of course, would be uh, recorded and we'd highly suggest you to watch it again. You can watch it over and over again. Watch it with your kids, your friends, and then try it also. So this would be a fun, quick way on doing this. There. Let's see it here. So this is mostly green. And then on the back, I'll be adding a black on the back so that you can see the colors brighter. So at first, I'll be using a little bit of brown here on the upper part. This looks very much like chocolate. It's also a good way to uh, talk to your kids. Bond example, if you're looking for fun, you know, let's say, oh, we're using brown here. What what color, what, what does brown as a color reminds you of? See? And then right after, I'll be using the black. The black actually uh, is a good color to highlight. Now, as you can see, I'll be using this uh, wet on wet technique where I am actually blending my brown with black. These swirl like things would be uh, reminiscent of some of the best abstract paintings that you probably have seen, like the Starry Starry Night or Abstract Expressionist. See that? Very nice, right? Usually when you use uh, black, especially on painting, it gives you that space where you can create different kinds of contrast. So when you say contrast, the ability to create a big difference either in color, in form, or in other art elements. In this case, we're, we're doing a contrast in the value on how light, how dark, how bright the color is. Again, if you're finger painting, in the first uh, few part of the painting, you don't have to think about having everything at the right place. You at least want a an overview of all of the colors where they would be going. We're doing flowers now, but you can also use this for uh, another fun things in summer is coming. Uh, probably you can do an aquarium painting using finger painting, or one of my favorites would be doing different kinds of dinosaurs using finger painting. Can it, It's actually depends on you or what kind of subjects your kids would like to do. There you go. See? Fun, I know. Of course, since this is uh, acrylic, you can actually put another layer of paint over. You just want it to dry if you don't want the colors to mix too much. There you go. Again, welcome to the Right Tech Live for today. We are using the Giotto Finger Colors Dita paints. So I'm just using my hand to create this painting on a watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, you can also use a drawing paper. Just using black at the moment using brown to swirl a little bit texture on the background because sometimes black feels a little too dark so adding a little bit of brown gives that mood to the color it's both neutral but brown feels like chocolate especially in this case you'll see uh, it looks like chocolate again a painting creating art especially in this time of the pandemic, uh, gives you beautiful bonding time with your kids, with your pamangkins, with your friends. This is good for all ages. If ever you have that idea that you cannot paint or cannot do anything artsy, especially for those people who wanted to try but never tried when they were young, uh, this pandemic would be a very 
good opportunity for you to try these things. Highly suggest you try it out. It gives you a beautiful way to relieve that stressful uh, long day at work. Okay, I'm putting black again on this side. Again, don't think about doing everything perfectly at this point of the painting. You can go back later on when everything is a little bit dried. There you go. What's fun with finger painting is that you get to see the texture of your paper with the texture of the paint itself, the thickness of the paint you can see there. A little bit of brown here and there to add texture to our background. Thank you for uh, watching and spending your Thursday afternoon with us. If it's your first time watching us, uh, feel free to like and subscribe to and follow the Right Tech Facebook page. Also, check their Instagram page. If you want any of the things that we're using tonight, uh, you can send them a message. There's a good discounted price for the different products that you'll be seeing on the different Stay Home, Stay Safe episodes, especially for those people who like the Facebook group and shared the Facebook Live. This is uh, Raven Fox 13, Ian De Jesus. There you go. See? Now, uh -huh. I'll just clean my finger. Just dip it in water and then clean it up on a paper towel. Teacher? Okay. Yes. It's very dark. Opo, yung background. We just do ano muna? Ah. A... Kasi eh. Kaya dapat. Oh. So we want everything Muna to set a little bit and then we can put a little bit of additional color later on. So at the moment, we want things to set. And then we can add yung highlights using yung yellow, especially on the flowers. Example here. Ganda. Add a little bit of that there. So it's good to uh, experiment, especially if you're using paints like this. So you take advantage of the paint texture. In this case, this would be a, a thicker paint, which is good for finger painting because it retains yung shape nya, the shape of how you painted the space, especially on some parts here. Of course, all of the techniques that we're using at the moment is a wet on wet mixing on the surface, in this case on the paper. Now I'll show you how to mix colors using the same paints on the palette. So I'll just put this a little bit on the side. So this is our palette. Example, you wanted to create a uh, yellow green. So I'll just get a little bit of yellow first. So when you're mixing colors, you get the lighter color as a base and then add the, sec the second parent color and then try to mix them together like this. See, that's a pretty yellow green over there. Let's add more yellow. Again, with the easy squeeze, uh, there you go. With the easy squeeze bottles of these paints, it's easier to do the mixing. I, I love uh, yellow greens. Nice. Now, 
how do we uh, darken the green that we have here? Usually, when I want to uh, darken the green, you can actually use the black, but I don't suggest it too much because sometimes using black to darken a color makes it dull. If you still want to make it a little darker, use red because it's the direct complementary of green over here. So we'll be making a dark green using this kind of mixture. See that? We created a dark green, a yellow green, just using minimal color combinations, using our fingers to mix the colors. See? So that you can see uh, how different it is from the green that we have used a while ago. I'll be putting the green in the middle. There you go. See? You can also teach your kids uh, basic color theory and color exploration using the same paints. I'll just clean up my hand a little bit, dip it in water. So don't be afraid of this uh, paint. It's uh, dermatologically tested. Okay. i sorry. That's my uh, eraser. Again, this is uh, Teacher Ian, Raven Fox 13. You can also check my Facebook page and Instagram. It's just Raven Fox 13 written on the lower part of the screen. So we have now our small painting over here. And then we'll be adding uh, yellow green, especially on some of the some of our leaves. You don't have to use uh, a single finger for everything. If you want to use your small your index finger, it's okay. If you want to use the thumb, it's also okay. This is one way to do it. You can also do a pointless approach where you will be uh, adding points like this. So it's like uh, using your finger as a stamp. It creates more texture this way. See that? Especially for the leaves since, you know, if you look at leaves, they actually has, have this uh, vein-like texture. A good way to teach your kids now. Ah, there are the leaves are not actually as is. You can see different kinds of vein texture when you look at leaves like that. This is a good way to introduce that idea to your kids to look further into the texture and the structure of a plant. Or you can even let them look at the plants in your garden or in your mini garden at home. Or you can let them look at pictures. See how, how nice the textures look over here. Go. When you press your thumb, especially on a surface, against a surface, it produces that beautiful web-like texture perfect for creating leaves and different veins of plants and animals. You can even use it similar to a fur creating. I'll be using the green here again on the this one. A little bit of yellow. here. Yellow is a beautiful color. It mixes well with both the warm and cool colors in the color wheel. It adjusts beautifully when you mix it with red and blue. So we'll be using yellow and then try to add more texture on the green since it would be the brightest and lightest color in this composition. See, one good thing that I would be uh, sharing with you is don't be satisfied with the idea that a surface is just colored with a single color. There are many colors present in everything. It's not a singular color. So if you want to color something green, add yellow green, add blue green, 
add dark reds or add browns. So just be adding another squeeze of the Giotto Dita here. If you just tuned in, again, this is Ian De Jesus, Raven Fox 13, teacher Ian, sharing with you how to use uh, the Dita finger paints by Giotto on our finger painting for tonight. This is a good project you can do with your uh, kids, with your friends, a fun art exploration project. Oh, you can also do this with your, you know, if your kid is a homeschooling kid and you are thinking of another project that they can do in the comfort of your home, these came in 750 ml, so it would last for many, many uh, projects. Now we'll create an, amuna, an orange. So I'll show you how to mix an orange. So you need a yellow. So we're mixing primary colors. Primary colors would be blue, red, and yellow. So to create orange in our palette, I'll just get yellow as our base tone and then get a little bit of red here. See, these are uh, available in Shopee. If you want to ask about the specifics, you can send a message to the Right Tech Facebook page. And then for the links, you can ask through PM or in the comment section. We'll try to get back into with you. See that? A beautiful orange color. Get a little bit of red and then add it to our yellow. Now we'll be adding a little bit of that texture to the flowers here. A little bit of orange. There you go. It's a 750 ml in seven colors. You can collect the seven colors, and it comes in black, brown, blue, yellow, green, magenta, and white. So, it's a perfect painting companion. You can use it for different things, especially for finger painting. Just imagine all of the things that you can do with these paints. Oh, I have a more orange here. And then I'll probably add a little bit of red on the lower part to make it brighter. So far you can see the brightness of the paints. It's easiest to start with uh, brighter paints, especially if you're painting with your hand and fingers. Mix beautifully that way. Here, go. And then clean your hand a little bit with water. I'll be using uh, yellow. Sometimes kids would uh, probably make a big mess of color when you do it for the first time. They'd probably end up with a brownish color. Just let them do it and then just explain to them that that happens when you combine all of the colors together. They get this uh, neutral tint of color. Okay, so I'm doing a Swiss of this and that over here for the Texture over there. See? See how I did that? Before everything dries, you try to mix a little bit of that over there. And you get that flower like texture. For your artworks. Of course, you can also use this for canvas, canvas board, craft boards. I'm using my different fingers for this, that I don't have to uh, clean my finger as often as possible. So adding here and there, 
more paint. Can add here. Again, this is a fun way to create. Now I'm using the dark greens a little bit here on some of the leaves. So I'm adding a little bit of a dark feel on the background, especially on the lower part. This is a good way to create contrast in color and tonal value. So you want darks and lights to be there to help each other in the composition. So while I'm creating this dark green color texture over here, so I'll be using it for our background over here in this side, especially the part where you can see the edge of the flowers. I actually want you to experiment on creating and mixing colors together using these method. This is to further get that texture that I want very prominent in finger painting. There you go. So the color is very near to the bright flowers. I make sure that they are in a little bit of a dark green color. Not covering everything because I added browns and black below. So it will a little a little bit of that will seep through the paint. And then as we go a little bit upward, I'll be introducing the green color right here. So this is to further see how to maneuver your color so that it doesn't uh feel too abrupt see that so you have this uh, feel that there are more plants on the back just by stamping a little bit on the upper side we can get a colors so I'll be using an orange there on the upper part the orange that we mix from red and yellow here. Under it is a brown color. That's a very good color to be the base of orange. You can see there. Very earthy brown on the back. There. You can also add this uh, orange like color little bit here so it gives you the idea that ah there are probably other flowers in the back you can also use red a little bit of red here and there sometimes when you have other things on the back you want them to be as abstract as possible just, just enough for you to be guided on that this is not just three flowers on a certain place but rather a mixture of different things in the garden, see? Just a little bit of highlight here and there. And then we will be... There you go. So after this, we will be letting this dry for a short while. I'll just put this aside and then we'll start with our second project. See that? A little bit of red scuro here and there. Just a little bit, not too much, because we still want the center of the piece to be on the three flowers in the front. A bit of orange here and there, just to give the viewers the idea that there are other flowers in the back. There you go. Okay, again, the material we used here is the Dita. Finger colors, one of the nicest uh, finger painting paints that you can uh, use. It's uh, almost odorless, very low odor. You 
you would probably smell nothing like paint when you're using this. I'll just uh, quickly uh, clean my hands lang so that before we shift to the next project, I'll just put this here. And then uh, we'll be using das clay. I'll just quickly, ano lang, quickly clean my hand with water, soap and water. So I'll turn you over for a while to Ms. Rosanna for some, of, some reminders regarding uh, the products, the live, and then... Probably Teacher Ian, can... Teacher yes. Ian, do you have the dust that you did last time? Yes, it's here, here, here. Yeah, so we can show it to them. Yeah. I'm back. After uh, doing that, I'll shift to my board over here. There you go. So this was the same uh, MDF board that I was using last week. So I was using an MDF board so that I don't have uh, unnecessary marks on my desk, especially if you're using paint and other materials. If you just want everything to be clean, also the clay to be clean, you use this. We'll be using uh, the dust clay today. So this time, the variant we're using is the white one. Okay, make sure if you're using this and you're not using the whole package, get an airtight container so you can put the rest of the clay and then you can keep it so that when you use it after a while. So I'm just getting a scissor. Again, what we're doing today is a different kind of sculpture. It is a relief. Sculpture. A relief sculpture is a sculpture where you can see here. It's a sculpture that starts with a platform. This is white. That's why I cleaned my hand. Of course, this is the same as the other one that we did. There you go. This is white. You'll see that it feels uh, a little bit different than your regular clay, the toy clay, the plastic clay that you use. This hardens to a certain degree when you just let it air dry. Again, this is a DAS modeling clay. This is an air dry clay. So you just need at least 24 hours or more depending on how thick or thin the structure you are doing so at the moment we have here some different tools here these are the jotopat plume especially made for creating different marks lines and for easy maneuvering of the clay okay so first thing we'll be doing is we'll be creating a slab of clay right here If the clay feels a little too uh, stiff, you just add a little bit of water to it. So what you want to get the form is to try to knead it a little bit, similar if you're kneading your regular clay here. And then you can use a rolling pin to create this slab. It's suggested that you don't want the clay to be very thin so that it doesn't break as much. So, so we're doing a relief today. So I'm just using a tool over here. It's similar to making bread. Oh, you can use a rolling pin. You can use a 
circular tool. In this uh, case, I'm using a sprayer here. You can flatten it in using other things, of course. See that. Just don't flatten it too much, of course, because you still want it to harden into a certain degree. If it's too thin, sometimes it crack, it's prone to cracks. So nice, right? There you go here. So I'm trying to mend some of the textures because you want to make it a little bit smoother first. I'm using water. So I'm adding a little bit of water so that it gets a little smoother. See that? And then if you want to uh, shape it into a certain shape, you can use cookie cutters. Of course, ask your mom if you're using tools like that. These are dermatologically tested, but non-toxic. But again, don't put it in your mouth. This is again dust clay. It's dust clay in white. Okay, so we're doing a relief sculpture over here. Now, what I want to do today is to create a shape. Now, we'll be using a... You want a circle like this. So I'm just using a regular plastic tub like that. And then what we will be doing is we'll be cutting the shape using the tool. Of course, you can use any tool that you have at home. But what I'm using today is the Giotto Pat Plume tool, especially made for this clay. These are PVC tools. There you go. See that? It's like a cookie. If you if you have created yung ano baking, this is a good ano way to introduce them to the idea of molding and sculpture. And then to smoothen the sides, just use water over here. You have a nice circular shape. You can use any shape that you like. You can do a star, a heart shape. If you want to smoothen out things, just dip your hand in water a little bit and then just put it there. there you go. Nice. This makes me think of dumplings. Oh, very. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can also uh, no, create a uh, make believe food using these. Oh, right? Of course, this is in white, but you can paint it with acrylic later on when they dry. So we have this nice space over here. Okay, so this would be our surface. Now, after doing that, we'll be uh, creating the texture. So for this one, I want to do a texture that is a little bit, uh, see that? So I'm doing, I'm puncturing it using the tool so that the texture of the white surface is not too smooth. You smoothen it out so that you can add more texture. Just uh, weird, right? But it makes you appreciate, again, texture. This is something that, it's not given that importance by other art books. The importance of tactile texture. Of course, you can use other things to put impressions on the clay. You can use a coin. You can use an, uh, a toothbrush. Your favorite piece of clothing. So again, I'm using this uh, texture to have this certain feel to the back of this relief sculpture. A relief sculpture is a sculpture that gives you a little bit of height. 
not much as the other one that we did last week. Of course, I'm doing this in a bigger scale, but you can do this for, let's say, an earring if it's smaller, or a pendant, or a trinket for a bracelet, or a bag charm, phone charm. This is one way to have that nice texture there. There you go. See? This reminds me now of pizza naman. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now, we'll be creating uh, fun flowers since it's a floral theme. So, you start with uh, doing this. Uh, I usually start with this one. It's a teardrop shape, similar to this. This would be the base of the flower. If you're uh, listening, watching this just now, again, this is the third uh, installment of the Stay Home, Stay Safe, uh, brought to you by Rytec. So Rytec uh, offers different kinds of School supplies and art materials. Uh, the things that are used today would be the Giotto uh, finger paints, finger colors, acrylic paints. And then at the moment, we're using Das Clay. So now we're uh, doing small circles here. So I'm trying to make three circles, a little bit bigger than the first one. So one two, and three. So when you're doing this, you, you, can, you can actually teach your kids how to count, to explore the idea of shapes that are similar, three, and then do five that are a little bigger than that. So a little bigger. There's no uh, precise measurement for these. So something bigger than that. So five of those. One, and two and three again this is from the same slab of clay that we are using a while ago three three four and five so we're doing an odd number so one three and then five and another one over here Okay, I started with the first one. I'll just put this aside. This is just your regular teardrop shape. Right after you want to do a petal. So these are petals. So you add a little bit of water to smoothen it out. See that? So it's very similar to the shape of the first one, but we want it to be flattened a little bit like this. So teardrop shape, but a little bit flattened. See? So this would be the first one. And then you let the second one to hug the first one over there. A little bit of joint idea here see that right after we do the same shape so we're doing similar shapes a little bit of water to smoothen it out here do the teardrop shape over here this is a fun way to do this without the molds uh, sometimes because they they see uh, there are clays and then that there are already molds similar to cookie molds then this is a fun way to do it without those things. You can just use your hands. Similar. See that? A little bit of water. And then put it here, a little bit halfway here. And then let it hug the first two over there. 
There you go. Smooth it a little bit. See that? Get another one here. So these are the first three. A little bit of water. Go. So make the teardrop shape. So you just need to be acquainted with the idea of how to create that teardrop shape. You just need to press your hand like this on the clay. Again, this is a fun activity you can try with your kids, your friends. If you haven't done this yet, this is a fun way to do this wonderful flower. I would highly suggest you do this. Don't be afraid of texture. It makes your work extra special. There you go. Have that. A little bit of water on the front and the back. Don't be afraid to have your hands a little bit messy. And then halfway here to that part, let it hug that first three parts like this. See that? And let it mend on the lower part here. We now have that nice bulb of flower there. Now, we'll be using the bigger, we'll probably add a little bit more clay here. So we'll be creating five. After the three, we'll be creating five similar shapes. So this would be a good way to explain to kids how to create similar shapes. It doesn't have to be perfectly the same, but very similar. So they have the same kind of shape, but you are progressing from a smaller shape to a bigger shape. Like that. Again, I'm using the dust clay in white. After this, you can color it with acrylic if it dry if after it dries thoroughly, probably uh, a day or two, or until it depends on the temperature and the condition of the room just make sure it doesn't you dry it in a clean and a little bit dust free environment so you see here it's a bigger teardrop shape you start from uh, get a little bit of water smoothen it out see how easy it is to smoothen things out front and a little bit on the back this also allows it to stick on the first few parts here. We ended here, a little bit half of that over there. Just let it hug that part. See that? It could be a flower. It could be a, what do you call that? A succulent. It's up to you on what color do you think would be good for this one. Feel free to create different things using these. So don't restrict your kids or your uh, playmates upon the things that they can do. If they want to create different kinds of robots, they can do it. If they wanted to create aliens, that would be nice. If they wanted to do bacteria-like things, it's also good. If they wanted to create fossils, that would be amazing. They wanted to do dinosaurs, that would be nice. I love creating dinosaurs when I'm using clay. Probably uh, do many things and probably post it in the next few days using these clay. So make sure that you're following the Right Tech Facebook page and then the Right Tech Instagram page for that. Probably add uh, other videos using all of these materials very soon also on my YouTube uh channel. There you go. Another water. Smoothen it a little bit. When you do this, did you see that? It curls a little bit. This is very fun to do with these kinds of projects. There you go. There. And then I'll just let it hug from this side up to the other. Okay. This part, I will cut a little bit. I'm just using uh, this uh, material. I'll cut this a little bit. There you go. 
don't worry about the things that you've cut. You can use it again. So this uh, sculpture is growing bit by bit to another one. Shape it. Don't worry about these. These are easy to rinse afterwards. Just get a placemat or a silicone mat when you're working with this so that you don't ruin your desk. In other case, you can also wipe it all out with a wet rag after you're done with it again even if sometimes you're doing uh these things these are again non-toxic but don't put it in your mouth water to smoothen and curve the shape a little bit on the other side also tip a little bit here there you go let it hug that part and then the other side also on the lower part you let them mend together like this see another one so it's just a, a repetitive pattern that we're doing but as we repeat the pattern we need a bigger piece of clay so this clay is uh how much is this? This is uh five hundred grams, I think. This is that one. See, so you probably can make so many things with these. Again, the reason why I'm doing it this this big, because I want you to see it on camera. If I do smaller, do small things, you probably won't see it. But you can also do smaller projects. You can make this into an amulet, a necklace. You can make this into an earring, a keychain, a trinket for your bracelet, a ref magnet. That would be also a nice thing to do. Of course, always make sure that you allow it to dry for at least a day or until it dries and it feels very hard, especially if you're using a thicker part of the clay because sometimes it's hard on the outer part, but the inner part of the clay is still wet. It depends on how thick your layers are. So the thinner they are, the easier they dry. The thicker they are, the harder, the longer for it to dry. So there you go, here. And you just let it hug that part from the other side to the other so here. Let's put it a little bit here. There you go. Okay, a little bit bigger. If ever you have uh, questions, okay, if you ever you have more questions, just put it on.
Sorry, sorry, I got I I I I pressed the wrong button. Okay, sorry, sorry for that. I was just I know I pressed the wrong button on my end. Sorry. Again, we're doing a bigger part here. So I'll try to do this a little uh, faster so that you can see the final product as soon as possible. Again, this is still uh, Raven Fox 13, Ian De Jesus. And there you go. You can probably use this one here. Just a little bit of water to have a better molding here. Okay, first one, just using my palm to flatten it out. Add a little bit of shape for the teardrop shape around here. Sorry again for uh, no, disconnecting a little bit a while ago. Thank you so much for spending your uh, Thursday afternoon with us here in Right Tech. Thank you so much, Mr. Sana, for uh, inviting me again to join you all here on this Facebook Live. There you go. Baka forever ka na with us. <laughs> and... So we do this here. Of course, this could go like forever. It's up to you if you want to make it bigger or smaller. Just need to mend this. See that? This could be a nice succulent you can use or do or a flower. It depends on how you color it later. If it's greenish or in another color, if you want to make it more of a rose you just need a little bit of curve in the upper part so if you want to make it more of a rose like flower you just need to do it the other way so that the petals would look different again use your hands don't be shy in using your hands and doing these things What's good again with the dust clay is it's uh, an air dry clay. So after this, if you're finished with this, you just need to let it dry without even baking. So you don't need an oven to make this a uh, figurine-like structure. So from this side, I'll just smoothen this one a little bit with water. Again, if you want to smoothen it out, just use water like this and that. And then let it hug the other parts over here. There you go. We adjust it a little bit over here. Okay, last petal for this one or last segment before we put it on our nice piece. Again, I'm, you, I'm doing this a little bit bigger so you can see it better on the camera, but you can also do a smaller version of what we are doing right now and then use it for earrings, keychain, bracelets, ref magnets. This is a relief sculpture. Just do this one here a little bit. Probably finish this one with a rope-like technique later on. I'll show it to you. What we're doing is just a repetition of shape, but with a varying size so we started with a very small one and then we ended up doing a bigger one if you wanted to try this for yourself uh, you can order everything and you can ask for the links by sending a pm on right tech facebook page they're also available in shopee so if you want to get that free shipping option try to 
check it there. Use your vouchers. Use your preferred method. There you go. This will be the last side. Again, don't be limited on what you can do with uh, clay. You can make it into different things. Animals, food, characters. You can even make letters. You can use your cookie cutters over here. There you go. Over here. There you go. This one there. And then we'll try to do a small rope-like structure. So you just need to roll your clay this way. Again, if you're not uh, using the whole uh, pack, make sure that it's uh, stored in an airtight container so that it doesn't harden. So I'm just doing a rope here. So what you want is to make it as thin, roll it as thin as possible. We'll be using our hand. We've been using our hands today for uh, so much today. So you just need to roll this into a thin rope-like texture, like a noodle. There you go. Again, if this uh, clay is uh, left outside, you can use in your room, can harden into a certain point where you can use it for almost anything. You can paint it, you can leave it as is. You can color it afterwards with acrylic paint. You can spray it with paints. I'm just uh, doing a rope here. So that you'll have an idea on how to do this. We're nearing the end of our live now. Make sure to like and follow Right Tech official Facebook page where you can see and watch these lives over and over again. The past two episodes, you can just scroll down later on and you can watch it. You can share it with your friends. Feel free to comment. Don't be shy. If you have other questions regarding the materials or the other things that are seen in this uh, live, feel free to do so. So after this, you just need to Twist it a little bit like this. There you go. Just need to twist this so you'll have a rope like structure like this. Like that. And then what I usually do is to further roll it a little bit like this so we have that nice shape and then you just connect it a little bit get uh, the surface a little bit wet here so you can see there so i'm just assembling it a little bit now wetting it a little bit there you go And then putting the shape in the middle over there. So this one you can use to uh, create other things. I'll just push the space a little bit here. Again, you can position the flower or, or the part in different spaces below like this, and probably push the inner part here going inside so that it connects a little bit with the base like that. Again, this is just one project that you can do among the countless projects you can do with clay, especially with air dry clay. This one you can use as a rough magnet. You can use it to be a jewelry space you can put your rings your pieces 
AirPods on this ba- on this part and put coins there your loose change you can add more petals or segments to the space that we just did here if you want to make it bloom bigger it's up to you i'm using the ditta joto pat loom tools there you go and then added a little more texture on this side there you have it so that's our fun session today there you go i'll just uh slowly you don't usually uh take this right away there you go so that you have an idea how big it is there you have a smooth things here and then a textured space over here this is again using the das clay and then the best thing to do after doing this is just let let it you uh, know let it dry on that side now we look at our uh, almost dried piece you can still see that it's not dried yet our finger painting a while ago using the Giotto Dita Pete's finger painting. So that's all for from me here. So I'll give you back to Miss Rosanna. So beautiful. Can you show me again the fox, the sleeping fox? I'll get the sleeping fox here on the side. The sleeping fox is uh, uh, hardened now. Wow. Yeah. So these are just some of the projects that we did for uh, this session and the last session. So I hope you uh, enjoyed today's session. If you did, share it with your friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Right Tech Facebook page to learn more things. And this is, uh, I know these sessions are free for you to share. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is Ian DJ Raven Fox 13. And thank you so much to our host, Right Tech, and to Miss Rosanna for providing a beautiful kind of project online where students, teachers, art enthusiasts, and alike are uh, watching together, doing creative things, making different things with their hands, especially today. Today, we did so many things with our hands. Yeah, and uh, so it's nice to stay stay home and to stay safe. So everybody, uh, till next time. Thank you so much Thank for watching us, whether it's live or whether replay. We welcome you to watch our um, show and then to buy our products. We're in Shopee. So um, to, uh, to know more about products, just go to uh, Shopee, uh, click on the, the type the name, and uh, just go to uh, and, and and purchase. Okay, and uh, I just want to I want to also take this opportunity to remind everybody about the movie The Woman of Tonta Club, which is uh, showing at KTX. Um, so this one, stay home, stay safe. Watch the woman of well, the women of Tonta Club at KTX PH or upstream.ph. You don't need to go out. Of the sin of the of the house, um, you just watch it from the comfort of your home and watch it with your family. It's a very very good bonding activity with the rest of the family. Um, those kids whose moms are not techie help them to um, get online and to stream movies, uh, so they will learn something new also. So it's not only the kids who are going to. Uh, stay home the and uh, have fun. The parents can also stay home and have fun. Okay, till next time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Teacher Ian, once again. Thank you. Bye-bye.